جب حجاب پردہ غیبت اٹھایا جائے گا ایک دن وہ آئے گا 32 years of age MA in history from Morana Azad University Hyderabad Bachelor in Arabic Literature from Al Mustafa University Qum Currently pursuing PhD in Arabic Language and Literature from University of Mumbai He is a teacher of Quran and Arabic Language at Hose Ilmiya Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam Najafi House Mumbai His topic Can we ask Imam Zamana alayhi salam to solve our problems? It will be in English May I please welcome Hujjat al-Islam Maulana Johar Abbas Khan Sahib Jeeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim نحمده ونصلي على نبيه الكريم وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بقية الله خير لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين Can we ask Imam Zaman alayhi salam to solve our problems This topic sounds very relatable especially in this recent times when each and every denomination and firqa has someone whom he asks for his problems, to solve his problems. Basically this topic gets divided in two parts. First of all, can we ask anyone except Allah to solve our problems? And then after, can we ask Imam Zamana salam to solve our problems? Responding to the first one, can we ask anyone and do we need anyone beside Allah to solve our problems? And if we ask someone except Allah, would it be matter? Someone say yes. People especially, if you are aware of that gentleman from Aligarh saying that if you ask anyone from except from Allah, other than Allah, you are clearly a mushrik. So basically, and, uh, have you ever think about the, thought about that ki, this problem, shirk, mushrik, iman, and kufr, and why doesn't this problem get sorted out? Millions of speeches, billions of books, millions of articles, and this problem is still exists between us. Why? Because both the parties, whether they are supporting tawassul or they are against it, both the parties describe or elaborate the word shirk with their own perspective, by their own meanings of that word. So, referring to the verbal meaning of shirk, sharaka yashriko, being a part of something, sharakat or shirk, the same thing. Mushrik, someone who claims or makes part of someone. Mushrik fillah, yani someone who claims that Allah has a partner. Okay? And they say, if you ask anyone or anything except Allah, you believing that Allah has a partner or Allah has a parallel authority beside him. And this can be found in two things, two, two sections in your life. First of all, in your actions. Your actions sometimes denotes that you believe someone is also having same authority that Allah possesses. And second thing, your intention. You doesn't do anything. You are lying on your bed. But since you believe that Allah has a partner, you are a mushrik. Okay? So, focusing on these two only, getting back to the Quran. Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَإِذِ اسْتَسْقَى مُوسَى لِقَوْمِ فَقُلْ نَظْرِبْ بِعَسَائِكَ الْحَجَرِ فَانْفَجَرَتْ مِنْ هُثْنَةَ عَشَرَةَ عَيْنَا We see in Quran, we find in Quran that if your action, if you ask someone except Allah for help to resolve your problem, but you don't intend, don't believe that he is a partner of Allah, your action is not a problematic. Because in, in particular, in this uh, incident, we see that why is this Saska Musa? Musa asks for Allah for water for his people. And Allah says, strike your stick on that stone 
and the water was there. Just a minute, just think that why the people of Bani Israel, why the people of Janabe Musa had to go to Janabe Musa? Why didn't they just went to Allah and asked, Oh Allah, give us water? What was that? What is it different? And if they had went to directly to Allah, what would have happened? Simply, Allah would have never told them that go to Musa, he has a stick and he can solve your problem. Because for that, each and every one of Bani, every one of Bani Israel would have needed to be a prophet to receive such a message. That means, if you go to Allah directly or find his hujja, both are the same thing, to resolve your problem. And Islam, first ayat, in which Allah not only allows but encourages to finding his hujja to connect to him. Other ayat in Surah Nisa, ayat number 64, Allah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ وَاسْتَغْفَرُوا وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّبَ الرَّحْمِ And when they do unjust to themselves, if they come to you and beg for forgiveness for their sins, and Rasul Allah also begs for Allah for their forgiveness, they would find that Allah accepts everything. Why to use this lengthy process if you have Allah on your, on your side? Why to go to Rasul Allah and then ask him to seek forgiveness for you, then Allah forgives you? Why don't you just get up in your bedroom and ask Allah? What it means? It means as long as you don't believe that Allah has a partner, your action cannot prove that you are a mushrik. And coming back to the second part, intention. If you believe that Allah has a partner, no matter whatever action you do or whatever you perform, you are a mushrik. Please, be attentive. Can you dif differentiate in between these two things, action and intention? Which one of these two is more dangerous to you? I mean, which of these two can lead you, drive you to the shirk more rapidly? Obviously intention, because your action doesn't always necessarily take you to the shirk. For example, if you ask me, please give me that paper I give you. And if you don't intend that, if you don't believe that Allah has a partner, this action would not be labeled as a shirk. But your intention is, as soon as you thought that Allah has a partner, you are a mushrik. Even you are offering a namaz. Namaz, the purest action a Muslim could have ever done. In that purest form of action, too you can be a mushrik. Because, just because you, are, you, are, you believe that Allah has a partner. So your intention is more dangerous and more and this is something you must be more careful about because it can take you to the shirk more rapidly and more quickly. So, having mind in these two, let's get back to the history. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bukhari and Muslim both narrates this. So, there is no need to show any kind of references. Twelve of my companions are munafik, hypocrites. Someone says, Ya Rasulullah, if you know that 12 of your companions are mushrik, why don't you just simply eliminate them? And we can live freely. Rasulullah says, I can do. But if I eliminate them, people will say that, oh, Muhammad is killing his own companions. Please note and answer me, which problem? I said, there are two forms of shirk. Once in your actions and once it can be found on your intention. Which of these two were found in Munafiqs? Was their action shirkful or their intention? Obviously intention. Mushrik, uh, Munafiq, what is Munafiq? Who says La ilaha illallah, who says Muhammadullah verbally. But inten intentionally he says, internally he is a Munafiq. That he doesn't believe in Allah, uh, sorry, Rasulullah. Ultimately, he doesn't believe in Allah as well. So, 
munafik who has the biggest problem of these two rasulullah how rasulullah responded to that problem said unless as long as they are claiming to be a muslim i have to treat them as a muslim unless they declare themselves as a mushrik i will not take action any kind of action against them and quran says اذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد انك لرسول الله والله يعلم انك لرسوله وان المنافقين لكاذبون قران doesn't label them as mushrik قران says kadhib they are liars even quran knows their intention is that rasulullah is not a prophet and allah is not a god so the biggest problem because of these two munafiqin and hypocrites of by the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam back then in first or second hijri prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam neither the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam called them mushrik neither the quran labeled them as a mushrik but they waited them to expose themselves and accept that they are mushriks so if in this time in our uh, time and this current situation why can't we respond to those who we th- whom we think that are mushrik why don't we wait for them to explain that what is in their intention we see someone is asking uh, imam husain masal someone is asking for example someone else someone is, we say that this is a mushrik why you know that action cannot be a criteria for being mushrik or momin i am offering namaz can i be a mushrik or not yes i can be because in iman belief intention is a internal job no one can define this unless i clarify it so if prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam can tolerate the one who is intentionally against iman and obviously is a mushrik but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says as long as he is claiming to be a muslim i will accept his islam so in this time in this era if someone ask imam e zamana e salam you cannot say that he is a mushrik unless you ask him what is your intention what do you think about imam e zamana what imam e zamana e salam is in your eyesight then only you can label him as a mushrik or something else so getting back to the topic that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and interestingly if i was leader of mushrikeen allah na kare but if i ever managed to become the leader i will never accept any of muslims as a mushrik because as long as you are chanting la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah you are up to your kalme tahud how can you be a mushrik first get rid of that slogan and then come and take part in this group and but if we muslims we just cherry pick if we see someone asking accept allah anything any time he is a mushrik so main thing that this shirk and this allegation of shirk doesn't end because some people get trapped in emotions while asking for someone they are emotional and their opponent is opponent too is sometimes emotional no no this is a shirk this is a shirk now we have to stick to the quran and stick to the sunnah and quran says and sunnah says, unless a person clarifies or defines himself as a mushrik you cannot say him label him as a mushrik and concluding to this uh, mr to whom i referred mr it's not better to mention him that professor from aligarh he says the imam e zaman al islam you ask imam so it is clear that we can ask any one except allah as long as we are thinking that his power is not parallel to allah but is granted from allah okay so imam e zaman al islam if you believe that imam e zaman al islam all the power he possesses is given by allah you can ask for for your problem solving your problems so he says why you re- writing a letter to imam e zaman who did that in imam e zaman al islam in the period of imam imam ali or other imams did anyone write these kind of letters to imam or they went directly and asked for their problems to solution of their problems obviously they went directly so why to communicate his term is communicating extraordinary communicating 
hypothetical and blah 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 he says why to use these met methods why don't we go directly to mm zamana and ask this kind of argument shows and this kind of fallacy shows you are unaware of basic of your concepts basic concept is what what you accept that uh, that fellow two accepts that imam uh, imam muhammad baqir alaihi salam imam raza alaihi salam imam jawad alaihi salam and in some narrations janabe abu talib and janabe zakaria all of these five respected personalities have mentioned bibi janabe fatimah to zahra salamullah alaiha in their prayers and while asking allah for their solution of their problems they always mention bibi fatimah zahra salam so on one hand you are accepting that i may tahirin have made bibi fatimah salamullah alaiha their wasila in their tawassul and on other hand you say why we communicate imam zaman al islam through letter so this shows that you are unaware of your basic teachings what you accept but you don't know that these things exist in your own text and finally i would say that calling a man shirk or calling a person who is asking from someone who is believed to be blessed by the grace of allah the grace of allah and the power of allah and the might given by allah is not a shirk brother you are mistaking the basic concept allah and wajihan indallah are the two different things wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa akhir da'wana ان الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج الشريف وصح المخرج المنير واكحل ناظرا بنظرة منا اليه بر محمد وعلى محمد صلى الله جزاك الله انا ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور يور وندرفل ثوتس سمول توكن فروم بروميس مهدي تو يو سامينج اب ذا سبيتش باي مولانا جوهر ابا صاحب وير هيز ٹاپک واز کین وی آسک امام زمانہ ٹو سولو اور پرابلمز he very clearly elucidated defined shirk and mushrik gave a good example of hujjat e khuda of that time janab e musa alaihi salam to prove his point thank you very much for your enlightening words sadaqallahu alayyul azim